and don't call her Liz. The email exchange with Washington Congressman Jim McDermott's office manager, which is sweeping the nation. 19 emails later, Elizabeth Don't Call Me Liz Becton demands, quit apologizing and never call me anything but Elizabeth again. Also, make sure you correct anyone who attempts to call me by any other name but Elizabeth. Tonight's WTF moment. Don't call her Liz. All that and more now on Countdown. Never. I hate that name. There is a pediatrician in Augusta, Georgia, named Dr. Elizabeth Becton. And if you know her, and she seems a little put out tonight, she's got damn good reason. You know that old joke, some clown has gotten hold of your name and is sending out crazy letters or emails? Poor Dr. Becton. Our number one story, tonight's WTF moment, there is another Elizabeth Becton, known to her friends as Elizabeth, and she is gradually becoming internationally known, not in a good way. Yesterday on the Shenanigans blog of the Politico website was printed a chain of emails between the Elizabeth Becton, who is the executive assistant and office manager for the Democratic congressman from Washington State, Jim McDermott, and an unnamed executive assistant for McBee Strategic Consulting. The person from McBee was trying to book a meeting with Elizabeth Becton's boss, the congressman, neither of whom are pictured here uh, next to me. Uh, the first request was addressed to Elizabeth, and it went unanswered. The second request, five days later, was addressed to Liz, and it unleashed a torrent of outrage that we will review in its entirely, entirety presently. We took a few liberties here. We're not sure of the gender of the McBee person, so we just used a guy, and Ms. Becton's fill-in, who is shown here, is actually another guy who works here in a wig. And we won't be seeing him for several weeks, I think, after this thing plays. <laughs> In any event, what we did not fake was the content of these emails. I'll also note that the congressman's office says Ms. Becton has apologized to her correspondent, both publicly and in person. So, caveats out of the way, behold. And, and just a suggestion, don't call her Liz. Elizabeth, attached is a meeting request for J.P. Morgan Chase, who will be in D.C. June 3rd, 4th, and would like to request a brief meeting with the congressman. Let me know if you need any additional information. Thank you! Hi, Liz! Just checking in on whether the congressman is available next week. Redacted. Can confirm a meeting time for you. She is available at... Redacted. Thank you! Best! Who is Liz? Hi, Elizabeth. I thought you went by Liz. Apologies if that is incorrect. Best! I do not go by Liz. Where did you get your information? Hi, Elizabeth. I'm so sorry if I offended you. I thought you'd gone by Liz at Potlatch. This was my mistake. Best. Never. I hate that name. Hi, Elizabeth. I'm so sorry if I offended you. I must have misheard. My mistake. Best. To this point, the affair of Ms. Becton and the person who did not know not to call her Liz is still within the realm of virtually everybody's personal experience. It is a vexing problem to be named Keith and have somebody call you Pete. If you're Deborah and you can live with Deb, but you abhor diminutives, it's understandable. You may not even look up when somebody shouts, Hey, Debbie! But now, at 5.20 p.m. on the otherwise delightful afternoon of the 27th of May, this all became something else indeed. If I wanted you to call me by any other name, I would have offered that to you. I think it's rude when people who don't even ask permission and take all sorts of liberties with your name. This is a real sore spot with me. My name has a lot of nicknames, which I don't use. I use either my first name or my last name because I row with a lot of other women who share the same first name. Now, please do not ever call me by a nickname again. As for your meeting request, who is the point of contact for this meeting? If it's not you, then I need to know who, because it's very time-consuming to deal with a lot of people for one meeting. Thanks! Wow. Elizabeth, I'm so sorry I offended you. My mistake. Redacted. Can confirm a meeting time for you. She is available at... Redacted. Thank you! Sounds like you got played by someone who knows I hate that name and that it's a fast way to tick me off. Who told you that I go by that name? They are not your friend. 
Hi, Elizabeth. Again, I'm sincerely sorry for offending you. I don't want to cause trouble, as I clearly must have misheard the person at Potlatch. It was in no way my intention to make you upset. Best... I really want to know who told you to call me that. Hi, Elizabeth. Again, I am sincerely sorry for offending you. I don't recall who I overheard. It was in no way my intention to make you upset. Best, let me put it this way. They don't know me, and perhaps they were pretending to know me better than they do and pretended that I go by Liz. They did you a disservice. In the future, you should be very careful about such things. People like to brag about their connections in D.C. It's a pastime for some. It's also dangerous to eavesdrop. As you have just found out, quit apologizing and never call me anything but Elizabeth again. Also, make sure you correct anyone who attempts to call me by any other name but Elizabeth. Are we clear on this? Like I said, it's a hot button for me. And so it is finally at an end. Oh, no, it isn't. There was a P.S. And please don't call the office and not leave a message. My colleague tells me that you called while I was away at the ladies' room. I do sometimes leave my desk. Hi. Is Liz there? <laughs> Is Rachel Maddow. Mind if I call you Liz? <laughs> <laughs> no problem, Pete. <laughs> That's excellent. Incredible. Thank you very much, Keith. You're and welcome. thank you at home for staying with us for the next hour. And, oh no, more emails from Don't Call Me Liz. All that and more now on Countdown. I think it's rude. First, a postscript to last night's story about Elizabeth Becton, the angry Don't Call Me Liz emailer. Criticism of our dramatic presentation of these emails of hers has been limited, but focused on one point. How could we so embarrass an ordinary person who just had a bad day at the office? Firstly, Ms. Becton, who is not shown in your picture, was not an ordinary person. She is the office manager and scheduler for Congressman James McDermott of Washington State. Those emails were not just crazy, they were paid for by your tax dollars. Secondly, the website Wong Kent has now posted two more email chains from Ms. Becton, which they say are from last year, one in which she threatened another congressional scheduler who had leaked some ditzy emails. If I ever find out who you are, I'll further inform the Speaker's office, standards on official conduct, and all the other appropriate offices of what you did. And if you got paid for it, my lowly, putrid little Wong Kent reader, you have committed a crime, and you will be punished for it when you are found. A second, more heated exchange, was a series of emails meant to support a suspended cafeteria employee, I'm over here, as Ms. Becton got angrier and angrier because somebody got the employee's name wrong. 